Hey everyone, I'm Chris Appling. Thanks for tuning in to another tutorial here for Appalachian News. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to do something a little fun. So I've decided to focus a little bit on the events that's been closing because of the um, uh, pandemic. And that's what really these tutorials are based on, giving you something to do at home, uh, whether with your children or for, for students. Um, There's going to be a little bit of time now where we're not going to be in school, so there might you know, be a need for something like this. So the thought is is that we would draw together and learn some basic art techniques and that sort of thing now as the uh, editorial cartoonist for the newspaper i get to come up with characters a whole lot but one character we're going to be looking at today is actually a character of mine that i did for a series um, of books that i've been working on and his name's bill he's a he's a just a common um simple mountain mountain folk he's um kind of really um, inspired by the Hillbilly Days uh, events that happen each year, the festival that's held in Pike County, Kentucky. Every year, Hillbilly Days, uh, everyone probably familiar with the newspapers um, are real familiar also with Hillbilly Days. Now, Hillbilly Days for 2020 has been canceled. I don't know if they're thinking about uh, postponing it or rescheduling it. I have no idea any of that, so don't hold me to it. But as of right now, I know they're canceled. And as a young, uh, as a young boy and even... Um, even you know, as a young man too, I've really enjoyed going to Hillbilly Days uh, for the food and seeing all the different folks who come out from all over the country, the world really, uh, to come to the mountains to experience the festival. And so this character that I've created is connected with that in a way. And the technique we're going to be learning today is cross hatching, which is a favorite technique that I have for uh, my own uh, work. So I hope you enjoy today's tutorial. Another short one, uh, just all you need is some simple materials. And please, if you do create whatever it is that you create while watching this tutorial, we'd love to share it uh, with our audience. So if you just want to look at the link, um, actually the email address provided in the description probably best of, of this video and see exactly where you can send your work send it over to us and we'll share it and if you want to tell a little bit about yourself too maybe your name age where you go to school that sort of thing that that's really encouraged if you don't want to share all that you don't have to but we'd love to see your art though please please send us your work okay thanks so much and i hope you enjoy this fourth tutorial in the coronavirus uh, things to do at home series, I guess you could say. All right, hope you enjoy. Okay, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about materials. Now, like always, you're going to need a pencil, just a normal HB number two pencil that you find in classrooms. That'll work great. I'm going to be using mechanical pencil for my drawing, but it doesn't matter. I'm also going to be using an eraser. If you have a block eraser at home, that's really handy. If not, use the one on the end of your pencil. I may also, you see me using this mechanical eraser, but don't worry, you don't need anything fancy for that. I'm gonna be using three different types of pens for this, and the reason I'm using three different types of pens is the top of the width of the tip. So anybody that knows anything about pens and pen drawing pen sizes, you have different um, sizes, and those are usually uh, depicted on the ends of the caps. Uh, that just gives you a line variation in your width, and that's the only reason I'm using it for. But you don't need three different types of pens. You can use a uh, fine tip Sharpie and just with how much pressure you put down, you usually can get a small uh, variation of width in there. So you get some different types of widths just doing that. So you don't need all of these materials. Really piece of paper, pencil, eraser, and a pen will be great. And uh, you can learn how to cross that in today's short tutorial. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into our drawing. So as I promised in this video, we're going to be looking at a character that I came up with that is derived somewhat from the Hillbilly Days icon character from the late 80s going into the early 90s. And I remember this character from the buttons that was sold during Hillbilly Days by Shriners. So I would see, and I have these buttons, there are a couple of them still, but this character looks nothing like the character on the button but it is somewhat similar in a way uh, it's a um, so it's like a stereotypical hillbilly character um, but but somewhat different so let's start out we first need to draw before we can learn how to cross hatch so on your paper here just follow along with me the best you can with this so we're going to do 
a shape like this for the nose and then just above the nose on each side I do a couple of dots for eyes just like that and then above the eyes I'll put some eyebrows in here and notice I'm not using the circle method that I've talked about a few times and the reason for that is we're going to draw the character and focus more on cross hatching than basic drawing in this so first of course you have to draw the character now I'm putting just below the nose a few lines here uh, which is going to be the mustache nostril now jump over straight over from the eyes a little bit and we're going to put an ear draw the shape inside the ear the hair comes down towards the ear like that and now we're going to put a smile inside or just underneath the mustache just like that and just like with the Shriners button character a couple of teeth sticking up and then bottom lip and then some lines coming down from mustache to the bottom lip here and over here on the side and then we're going to draw some of these lines coming down forming the beard coming this way and some lines coming down forming the beard going this way out to a point just like that and then once we have the point drawn we go back up here and we're going to draw the shape going all the way around side of head that way and then down this way towards the back of the head and then this forms Bill's hat okay and then we're going to have a couple lines down here and what I'm going to do is pull this line in just a little bit here we're on the side made it a little bit too wide for his head there there we go now I'm going to come over here and finish more on the overalls there's one there and then of course his sh his uh, shirt sleeve his arm going down this way you have another loop here and there we have our character now once you've drawn this character out you can get your pen and you can start working on cross hatching so learning how to cross hatch there's a lot we could get very technical with this I'm going to keep it as simple as possible the first thing I'm going to do is outline the entire drawing with this larger tipped pen you can see that the line is fairly thick and line variation helps to show depth of perspective it also helps to show um, all kinds of shadows in a character in a drawing so we're going to be learning a little bit about how this works today okay now I'm going to trace over the lines making up large part of the mustache and then the smile of course now inside here this will all be black solid black inside where the mouth is that's the only area that it will be solid black is right there the rest of it we're going to show uh, shadow um, by using cross hatching now we'll go ahead and finish up the mustache coming down this way beard I don't know if anyone remembers these buttons or not but they were pretty uh, it's a pretty pretty iconic um, design of a character at least the version that I remember growing up and maybe I was the only one that just that navigated towards these buttons because I really loved pen and ink drawing even at an early age but maybe everyone remembers 
that old Shriners depiction of a hillbilly on those early hillbilly days buttons but I sure remember them so there we go it looks something something like that totally not that too at the same time I've of course made it my own in my own way and so now what I'm going to do is take a the smallest tip pin that I have and when you cross hatch the idea works something like this so you first start out making parallel lines that run side by side of course parallel in one direction so going let's say this way and then once you've done that you you go back over them hence cross hatching and you literally make the same line pattern going across in the opposite direction usually with the same width or at least as close as you can in between each line that you draw so there's a similar width between those so for instance if our light source is a light bulb up here let's pretend for a second this is a light bulb okay and you turn this light bulb on the light's going to be coming from this direction just as so and if that's the case then everything underneath here will be of course shadow so I'm going to start here on the arm drawing parallel lines first on the sleeve now I'm going to work on the uh, shoulder strap to his overalls underneath the beard all of this will be darkened in on his pocket there will be some shadow on both sides of course over here for sure under the beard going up towards his shirt and then underneath the beard too but we'll make that in a different direction I'm only working going in the same direction at first with these first series of lines so I may come up to the nose and notice that my lines are getting shorter as I get towards the light source and then over here on this side of his hat and notice the lines are getting shorter as it goes out towards the tip of the uh, the brim of the hat it's like that now on this side as well up here of course underneath the hair and underneath this part of his hat this part of the hair and then we're going to draw a few lines going out towards our light source in this direction because this is all underneath the brim of the hat this part of his hat will also be shaded in some with shadow now I don't always keep I'm not very good at it anyway I should say keeping the same distance in between my lines but uh, it's a good idea to do that now once I've created a series of lines going in this direction I go back over now and I start to place lines going in the opposite direction of those I first created and this will give the effect of there being shadow or it should anyway you can see how this is kind of already starting to work here so just by crossing these lines with other lines we start to see that maybe there's shadow being formed on our surface of our drawing it kind of takes a 2d piece of art and turns it into a 3d piece of art the nose everywhere that you put these first series of lines you're going to put a second series of lines just like this now how much cross hatching you do really depends on how detailed you want to get with a drawing um, for the purpose of this we're going to try to keep it a little basic we're not going to go too 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 detailed with it if you do create this at home we'd love to see it there's a description of course with this video and in that description you will see an a, uh, email address and you can send your drawing of the hillbilly character 
to uh, that email address and we'll post it here and if you want to include your name that would be great if you want to include your age that'd be wonderful too now I'm going to follow underneath the beard with a series of lines going up towards the light source in this direction all up through here and on the other side just like that my goal is now to show a little shadow coming in this direction now notice what I'm doing here though when I'm drawing the second series of lines I'm actually bending them at a curve a little bit of a curve this time at least down towards the tip of the beard down here and the reason I do that is that the line is moving in this angle so by bending the second series of lines we can actually show a little more uh, con contour there to that beard and the shadow that forms it underneath the mustache I'm sorry underneath the nose on the mustache we have another series of lines there so you can already see just by what little we've done that there's a shadow effect that's starting to form that shadow effect is all done by this cross hatching technique now you can get super detailed and continue to cross over lines that you've already drawn at a different angle until it makes almost like a quilt like pattern like this but what you want to be sure and do is to never at least make the same repetition of lines over top of lines you've already created always go at a different angle so in this case it's almost like making if you look really if you were to look really close you'd be able to see this but this almost makes like a quilted pattern so these lines are actually forming tiny little boxes little tiny boxes okay and where there should be more shadow you can add more uh, lines like this that cross hatch over top of existing lines so I may not want to use this same effect everywhere but for instance underneath the hat where I know there's going to be a lot of shadow I can go back over this another time come at it at a different angle and I can really really start to form some dark shadows in there so in this portion I could go over it again this way and this should show more shadow here than on this side which it does and of course this side of the beard maybe even but notice how I didn't go all the way up through the chin but I will create some of these more of these lines here underneath the nose and that gives you the effect of not only being shadow there but also curvature of whatever it is that you've drawn so it makes that 2d become even more 3d in a way and all you're really doing is cross hatching lines and if you watch any types of more tutorials that go more in depth than this they really break down this theory here of starting out with a series of lines crossing those and then crossing those again and then crossing those again so that what you're left with is this unmistakable cross hatching pattern and that's where you get the term of course cross hatching right I love this form of uh, showing depth and shadow in a drawing uh, one of my favorite artists if you want to look this person up Edward Gorey was a children's book author used a lot of pen and ink early on always put your name on your drawing somewhere you can form your own signature it doesn't matter as long as your name's on it that's all that matters but if you did come up with your version of this character uh, based on the Hillbilly Days festivals, we'd love to see it and share it here on our website. So please send that in to us using the email address in the description of the video. I hope you've had a good time today learning a little bit about cross-hatching and drawing this iconic character based on the Hillbilly 
uh, Dave's festival character, Bill, is the character's name that I came up with, at least, at least for him. And um, we'd love to see your work. So hope everyone's staying safe out there and remaining calm. Leave some toilet paper for the next person. And until next time, have fun drawing. I'm Chris Epling, and we'll see you back here again soon.